Okay, we're gonna call the <laughs> we're gonna call the meeting to order. Okay. We could rise for the present Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic of the Stands, one nation. Thank you, everybody. Um, our um, secretary, um, Mr. Bucky Scott, is absent today, and uh, so uh, um, Bev Albright, if you could call the roll. Mrs. Bell, here. Mr. Bucky Scott, here. Mrs. Leon, here. Mr. Miller, here. Mr. Wilson, here. Mr. Scott. Here. Thank you, Ms. Albright. Um, okay, we have a superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, first item on my report this evening is a recognition of one of our high school students. Recognition is for being named the semi-finalist for the NMSQ, which is a National Merit Scholarship Wildfire competition through exemplary scores on the PSATs, and it qualifies the student uh, to be and go on into the, in the competition to be eligible uh, to be successful in a possible scholarship opportunity through the NMSQ program. So that person is here this evening, and her name is Emily Olofsson. So I would like to have her come up to the podium, and I will come around to present her with a special recognition and appreciation certificate from the board and myself on behalf of the board, and we give the opportunity to uh, have a photograph taken. Also, would like to have her parents <coughs> come out as well, Ms. Olofsson. That hug was sanctioned because she's my yes. daughter. <laughs> um, also, just um, coming to the close for, uh, of our first month here of the 2020-21 school year, and I'll be sending some correspondence out to our uh, learning community this week on the 30th um, regarding uh, some events that have taken place and, and uh, the efforts that we're proud of our community, those efforts that uh, have been being made to keep us safe and successful moving forward uh, through the uh, various restrictions and, and uh, face covering compliance and social distancing and all these things are community-wide effort that allow for us to continue to have our students be able to participate in uh, their education in some way, shape, or form through the learning options that have been provided to them. So, sending that correspondence out. Uh, additionally, in that will be information on the new screening wellness app that will assist our families in being able to respond in a more expedited manner the way they have been through our Google form and our paper platform that we've been using. So we're looking for that to come out this week as well. And additionally, you'll find on the agenda some under the programmatic consent update for the district athletics activities plan and a recommendation for that. Which when we get to that point of the agenda, I will 
reference that in your payment plan. And again, just thank you to the board for your continued support of uh, what we're, we're doing in these uncharted waters that we're navigating. <coughs> As I said, it, it's, it's hard to believe that we're about a month into this school year. And, uh, I know that our, our faculty, staff, administrators are working extremely hard. I know our families and our students are working extremely hard in these circumstances to be able to make this work. But thank you for your support. That's concludes my report, Madam President. Thank you, Dr. Cooper. Um, okay. um, we have uh, our procedures for public participation are listed. Um, hopefully, up there. I can't even read it. Is that right? Yes, that's right. And um, okay, so do we have any presentations by the public on agenda items tonight? Okay, seeing none. Oh, I will ask again after I add some edits. So I have uh, two agenda edits. One is listed. <coughs> one is listed in the. Um, there is. Um, it's actually on board docs um, for seven A three one nine. Um, addition, an additional point, a pre professional appointment, and that's listed on the website. Um, do I have to read it out loud? Okay. Um, and the second one is one I would like to add under 6A4. Um, we have um, new members of the board. I have to add them to committees. Um, I'd like to make an agenda edit to add. Um, Christian Thompson to the facilities committee, the policy committee, the extracurricular committee, and Ashley Godfrey to the finance committee, to the policy committee, and the technology committee. And as part of that, be moving, we will be uh, removing Beverly Albright from the policy committee, and we will be removing Bucky Scott from the ex extracurricular committee and that will be added 6A4. Do any other board members have agenda edits they want to talk about? Okay. Okay, moving on to consent items. Consent items uh, 3A1 through 13. Do I have a motion for that? Uh, Mr. Strobel, do I have a second? I'll second. Mr. Miller, do we have any discussion on anything under consent items? Okay, hearing none. Um, Ms. Albright, we have a vote. Mrs. Bell? Yes. I don't know. Yes. Mrs. Leone? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Ms. Olson? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Thank you. Okay, under um, personnel consent, um, we're going to take these separately. Um, um, can I have a motion for um, 4A, 1, 2, 1? Which is everything up to the end of professional for appointments. So that would be one, two, one? Yeah. Um, one, two, and three. Yeah, yeah. So everything up to Megan Kaplan. <clears throat> okay. Um, any discussion on any of that? Okay. Um, can, um, can I get a vote? Um, Ms. Bell? Mr. Strobel? Mr. Strobel? Oh, Ms. Leone? It doesn't matter. It does. It does. Don't tell, don't tell our solicitor. It doesn't matter. Because it does. All right. Sounds good. All 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, can I get a, um, a motion for under personnel four, two, two, one, two, and four only? Um, any discussion on those? Okay. Do, can I get a vote? Yes. Okay. Um, can I get a um, motion for finance five A one through three? Mr. Strobel, do I have a second? I'll second. Mr. Miller, um, is, there, is there any discussion on the items under finance? Seeing none, can, um, can we get some discussion while I write this down? <laughs> Discuss it amongst yourselves. <laughs> Think about it for a while. Okay? <laughs> So it's just all of five. All of five. All right. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Olson? Yes. Mr. Sherville? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mrs. Oldbury? Yes. Mrs. Bell? Yes. Mrs. Godfrey? Yes. Mrs. Leone? Yes. That's a debate. Okay. Um, so, um, if no one has any objection, um, when we get to programs, I think I'd like to get a motion for one, um, for 6A, 1, 3, and 4 that I added. We can handle that, and then we can have our discussion about the, um, um, the changes to the health and safety plan, because that's going to be a little bit more involved. So, if no one objects, I'd like that motion. Ms. Bell? Second. Ms. Leone. Um, any discussion on those issues without not including? Um, we're just uh, getting rid of number two for a second. The middle one. No. Well, the second one. Um, can I get a uh, vote on those? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, can I get a motion for um, six A two? So moved. Second. Ms. Leone. Okay. So. Um, we're making some changes. Well, we're recommending some changes to um, to our health and safety plan for athletics, uh, specifically about um, attendance. Um, okay, I'm gonna throw that to Mr. Dr. Cooper to um, kind of give us the cliff notes. Hey, what I'm going over is a reference on page eight of our athletics and activities health and safety plan on limits on gathering phase five. And the adjustments are for uh, outdoor events. Each Daniel Area School District uh, participants' parents will be given two vouchers for those outdoor events, so that the 
the outdoor events will be limited to a total of 250 people with the exception of football because the vast number of participants that are involved in that particular arena. Um, so in addition to the football participants, staff, and associate event personnel, two vouchers will be provided to each student participant, which includes not only uh, the participants in football, but also the participants in cheerleading and the participants in the band. The vouchers may be used by close family members only and will be given to visiting teams for outdoor events when the total number of people in the stadium is less than 250. And that calculation will be made after all of our participants have received those two vouchers. And that would come to play in uh, uh, the exception of the football. And that cheerleading, uh, as I said, and the band members will also receive two vouchers from football games. Our indoor events, our recommendation and plan will be limiting the, limiting the um, indoor event to participants only. So JV players are not permitted in the gym while varsity is playing and vice versa. So that both coaching staffs are permitted in the JV match, both coaching staffs and the varsity match uh, as well. So basically, all the participants now will be able to be in one gym instead of hovering around the door and substitutes coming in and out of the gym is where our recommendation is, is not going to be. Spectators attending events will obviously be required to adhere to the guidelines and face coverings at all times while on the property, um, socially distanced beyond it, the uh, family unit. Spectators that are unable to comply with those guidelines set forth by the district will be asked to leave with forfeit the privilege of attending events for the remainder of the year. And if the spectator refuses to leave, law enforcement will be contacted and considered trespassing. Opposing spectators are willing to comply with the guidelines set by the district will be asked to leave and, and risk their entire district privilege of attending any events posted by the district for the remainder of the year. Spectators will be prohibited from viewing the contest outside the stadium on district property and unmanageable trespassing may result in the stoppage of play. I should have unfortunately get to that point, but it would not. And anyone feeling well not feeling well should refrain from attending any of these events in our location or any of the locations. Those are the recommendations we're making and the changes in our health and safety plan to improve the uh, number of participants allowed. I do need to also caution Board so that they understand that based on what's out there uh, in the court system right now, um, <clears throat> if, if this is approved by the board, that at any time that uh, a ruling has changed the court systems, that would uh, be a requisite for us to return to the 25 and the after rule, we would have to comply as a school district to do so. I, I had a question. Hasn't the governor stated that it's up to the local school district to decide? I mean, he, he was recommends against it, but when he vetoed the bill, he basically said it's up to the local school districts and community to decide. And that is what um, that is also what the recommendation that has come down from PIAA and the BCIA. Correct, it is for us to set, and that that's what we're doing yeah uh, but, 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 but they could but there there could be further litigation that could lead us you know lead, lead you know there could be a situation where we have to reevaluate this I think this falls within what the B B C I double A is recommending, and what um, the P I double A is recommending. It could be, but the governor, when he vetoed it, he said that it really doesn't matter because he's already decided it was up to the school districts. He, he just he pointed to the veto. You, know, you mean that was his veto statement? Yes, it, it was in the press, and he said that more than once. Now. We know that this is uh, an, an appeals process that was uh, requested by the courts. Mr. Stewart, you correct me if I'm misspeaking here. That uh, was requested to have a, a response by midweek, I believe, at the end of September. 
Congress. So um, that, that could be changed what currently is out there. So the issue is the Western District of Pennsylvania, the, the federal court for the Western District of Pennsylvania ruled that the gathering of was unconstitutional on September 14th. On September 20th, well, and subsequent to that, the governor filed an appeal to the Third Circuit and had asked uh, the trial court, the federal district court, to stay their order pending the appeal. The trial court, as expected, rejected that on September 23rd. On Friday the 25th, the governor filed a motion for a stay with the Third Circuit Court of Appeals. Third Circuit ordered that the respondents file a reply to that motion by Wednesday, September 30th. And I think you can expect a decision from the Third Circuit on that motion to stay uh, very shortly thereafter. Um, I, I would note that the Pennsylvania Department of Education issued guidance subsequent to the Western District's uh, decision indicating that it was their recommendation to continue to comply, but that would imply that it's not mandatory. And there has been a split in opinion, legal opinions, regarding whether or not the Western District's decision applies statewide. Some, some law firms have, have opined that it does not. PSPA issued an informal opinion that it did not. We believe that it does. My firm is of the opinion that it does apply statewide, but you are facing this potential stay, which would uh, should be ruled on this week. But, but isn't the, the lawsuit much broader than the spectators uh, for school? Several municipalities out on you know, the western part of the state. Um, is it, but it's for restaurants and theaters yeah, and, well, and everything else. Yeah, and that's really what they're fighting. Right? There were multiple right. orders that were ruled unconstitutional. One of them, it was the non-essential business closure order, um, and part one of the orders that was struck down was unconstitutional was the ability on gatherings. Um, I'm just saying his comment after the veto, it was in the press a couple of times, is it doesn't really matter because it's up to local school districts and we're not going to enforce it anyway. <coughs> well, well, if the Western District's decision, if, if the Third Circuit doesn't stay mm -hmm. the Western District's order, then it would be up to districts. Right. Um, and I'm sure you were all aware of the House Bill 2787 that would have given the authority discretion to school districts. Um, they, well, that's when he said it, though. So that's why I'm confused. When he vetoed that, that's, he made that comment. Now, he vetoed it, and they did not override that view. No, no, but and then he made the comment when they didn't override it that it didn't matter anyway because it's up to the school yeah. districts. He's made that clear. Well, I, I, I know that a week ago, Friday, <laughs> sent yeah. letters out to superintendents saying that it was a recommendation and that they were appealing to superintendents to agree right. to that okay. So, I mean, the um, the upshot is that um, as far as the indoor recommendations, um, the the recommendation of the of the um, of the administration is that we at least up the number of people that are allowed to be in that room from 25 to having it be the officials, the the coaches. And all the players on that team, which, which um, right now I guess impacts mostly volleyball because right now um, not everybody on both teams can even be in the same room with the play, and then they're being asked to, they're subbing in and they haven't been watching what's going on. You know? Yeah, go ahead. I think they, you know, a potential plaintiff could argue that by ignoring 
the guidance that you were uh, really right with some of the terms and not major. Uh, I think that's tough for the hub. But I think yeah, certainly I'm certainly trying to understand it more so than anything else. You know, I just want to understand it so I can make my decision based on that. You know. it, it's not dispositive, but it would be a fact. Okay. Yeah. 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 If you don't include the op the opposing team, when because we're talking about football, so so inside um, we discussed um, what I think. We, you know, yeah, go ahead. Like um, it could be it could be as many as thirty people. You know, I mean. And that is not the recommendation from of the, of, no, yeah. And and we are streaming the so the parents can watch. Um, I thought my so but my thought. Oh, I that's just neither neither was the the yeah. band, <laughs> but um, that's okay. Um, um, but um, the. Um, the way it was explained to me, and um, Dr. Cooper and um, Ms. Schmidt can, ex can, can um, um, correct me if I'm wrong, um, before it was, it was a hard 25 to 50, so we're, we're expanding the, the, that in it, the, the idea of this change would be to expand that both for indoor and outdoor. We'll get to, we'll talk about football on its own in a second. Um, and, and do that in baby steps, and, you know, and not not do not do the whole universe of like let's also in, in let ha let's also have uh, parents, one parent, or maybe and then maybe two parents. You know, we go got to move it up. And that's kind of the, the way I thought we were. If I'm wrong, that we're moving baby steps, like the, you know, the changes. Are yes, to, and, yeah. and I think I think it's important to um, to utilize some unintended consequences and choices of some of our neighbors and what we know to help inform our decisions uh, to make sure that we're uh, providing continue to provide a safe environment for our um, students and families and allowing. Additional opportunity in the outdoor venue for um, our participants and many family members to be able to see them at those events uh, that are home. Right. And with the indoor, to make sure that we get all of our participants <coughs> in, that, in that activity, with that athletic venue, to be able to be on in one location. Mm -hmm. At least, yeah, yeah. In this this iteration of changes to the yeah. Um, so, my understanding from from soccer and field hockey um, outside right now um, that the 250 limit that we would be leaving in place with this is no is is no um, Im impediment to family members and, and friends coming to coming to the games. There aren't enough people involved in the actual sport to make it so that 
so that um, we're turning people away at the door for those, for, for like soccer and things like that. Correct. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But right, right now, we're in a situation when it comes to football, um, when you include football um, students, um, students, coaches, support staff, um, the ambulance, um, um, and then cheer plus their support staff and and band and their support staff um, and the other students from the other team where most uh, all the teams they're not bringing their cheerleaders or their or their um, or their band at this moment they're not traveling um, we we were only able to have 20 28 um, parents come to the last game um, if we made it so that every student that was participating from our school could have two two people come, um, that would be an additional like uh, two, over 200 people in the stands because we're talking like 130 kids, 150 kids from our school that are involved in the, in putting on that putting on that game. So so um, so you know. Um, we have to be comfortable saying that we're okay with not only do we have bands taking up one whole section of risers um, because they need to social distance as well and then um, for parents um, we, it would be like 100 and 260 people in the stands um, both sides will be available um, this, this will allow for us to follow the CDC guys So, so we, we know the capacity of the number of people we can fit in and have them six feet apart. Yeah. And I, I, I know I was at a stand that had six, so they had you know, two here and then six feet over, they had two on the bleachers. And right. So, so, we, so what, what is the capacity? Do we well, have we, we, we took uh, the approach of taking a look at pairs and singles. Okay. Um, and when we did that, uh, we came up with a couple of different scenarios and felt that the two participant uh, recommendation would allow for us to appropriately socially distance at six feet okay. or cluster distance at six feet. When I say cluster, I mean like family members sitting together mm -hmm. six feet apart from another group of uh, two parents and so on and so forth and also allow for some singletons in there. Okay. And, the, and you know, it would, it would um, you know, it's not, some, some other school districts are doing a thing where they have a hard, a hard, um, you know, that, you know, this is how many people we're going to allow in and once we get to that certain point we're either going to do a lottery or once we get to that like I don't know like 601st person we're going to turn them away um, and we could go that route but at least this way um, all the students that are participating would be able to have their parents or or guardians or, um, grandma you know a brother sister there um, cheering them on and without us having to because we had when we were before at the at, at the extracurricular meeting before the possibility of us being able to do this when you know we knew we would have to have this conversation down the road you know we were trying to decide how do we how are we going to make the decision of whose whose parents get to come when the, when we when there's less than 30 of them all out in those stands I have two questions um, one, um, one how do you check they get the kid. The kids get the the kids get the vouchers ahead of time. Um, so like um, the way it worked this time, that was that um, my daughter got a. And she's a senior. She's in the band, and um, so because it was senior night, I, I got to go. And um, so um, she got an email in Schoology on Monday saying we got two tickets 
for you if you're if you know and this you got a hard deadline that if you're if you're no one's taking them we're moving on to the next one and uh, and uh, then but when she came home on Thursday she had her tickets. Yeah, I get checked as a parent. I, I get like a student and I know when my parents don't pay for my friends. I get checked as goes to parents. That's not probably my first time. You didn't say they were parents. You said like family. Yeah, family. You didn't say they were parents. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, parents have access. No, I understand. If a student wanted to hand it, hard enough to get in. So if if a student like decided, I'm not inviting my fa- my 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 parent. I'm like I'm I'm letting my girlfriend and her brother come. Is that an option for a child? So our plan for this, if if we deal through the the new book, our plan is to set up a ticket pickup. Prior to the game. Okay. At 6 p.m., you come, um, if you're a student, if, if it's you, yeah. um, you come with your ID uh, and you would, you would check you in and do your tickets right there. Okay. So it's going to be like a will call situation? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And then you'll need to show those tickets. Yeah, no, that's, and that's new. Yeah. What she get? No, I understand. And the second thing is, you know, and again, you don't need to cause presentation I do. Mm-hmm. I'm not a coach, so I not, not looking at my own personal preferences. Um, this distancing, so pretty much then, you know, police, whoever's there, anybody there saying, you know, monitor is like we're in school. Yeah. School and monitoring. You really only really have two people ever sitting together. It's a family. They were there when there were only there were they they were there when there were only thirty of us. There were, there were twenty four of us in the stands, and it was constant reminders to social distance, move your mask, do this. It was intense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to have to happen. There's, there's public public uh, public announcements to the VA uh, about reminders. There's signs. There's security personnel. There's our official uh, security officer. So those, those, all those things are there to set uh, reminders to the folks around. And it's, it was in the plan that if somebody was at one of our events and wasn't following social distancing or mask wearing requirements, that we have the right to tell them that they're done with athletic events for the year. Is that unable or unwilling? No, if you can't wear one, you can't come. I just don't know yeah. yeah. it you know no one's gonna force you to wear one but you can't but you, you can't come if you can't wear one. Yeah, to the to the game. Yeah. That's that was in there. I thought it was. Yeah. I would just like to know the capacity of the stadium, normal capacity and the normal capacity of the gym. Normal the capacity of the stadium is at twelve hundred. Normal capacity of the gym. Just so we have a reference of how many this is out of what the normal. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know. Is it the stadium? Do you know normal the capacity? Gym, the gym is a thousand. Thousand. Um, when you have those sets of bleachers up. Okay. Um, and the capacity for this out here is twelve hundred on the home side, and I'm going to say a thousand on the opposite side. So it's too small. Okay. So I just wanted to point that out because what we're talking about is 500 in a stadium that has... And other schools, and, and other schools that have approved based on a percentage are, are, are approving 33, 33-ish percent. Um, and not all the bleachers are available for spectators because a whole section of bleachers that would normally see 300 people are taken up by the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I'd also like to point out that the, um, the band is in the is in the stadium, that I understand. But the football team is not in any contact. They are on the field. They don't have contact with any of the spectators. So I really view it as two separate sections. You know, I don't know what it doesn't, but it's 250 on the field, 250 in the stands. I mean, they're close to that limit, and they're not in and, and again, the recommendation also is based on that six foot social distancing uh, guidance. And when we had the athletic department, uh, Mr. Smith, and uh, uh, Ms. 
so that we go out and measure and put tape marks down so we can see what that looked like and get the appropriate counts. You know, can we handle the two um, two vouchers per participant in the largest venue that we have, and that's where we came up with the recommendations. We were able to do that. And if this, you know, if what's being recommended by the, the by the um, the administration is, uh, you know, I I have no problem with revisiting it and, and raising it if we had to, it, or if we felt like we could. Um, but I think this is a good first step. Right, I agree. It's a good first step. Agreed. Where the pandemic is. Absolutely. And what, how it's going on with the volleyball team because they're going to play the game day. Mm -hmm. And then what we're going to do for winter sports. Because I think if we're okay, we need to consider that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I was, I had the same thought, you know, when we get to uh, basketball, especially, you know. It's hard for me to take a look at a restaurant. I get it. It's not great. I get it. It's 50 now. Yeah. I don't know why in the school we're always held to a different standard, but we just are. So that's really where I mean, so I have a personal feeling about it, right? And I have where I'm representing here. So that's the only reason I ask the questions I ask. But, you know what I mean? So I mean, I actually, you know, it's like, yeah, it, it's not clear that's what we're held to today. The lawsuit says that we're not held to it today if it stays. Well, be, but because we, to me, because we, um, because we are um, kind of, as you said, like we're let loose on our own mm -hmm. to make our own rules, um, that, um, that, that that's to me why, you know, taking it one step at a time is reasonable because it is all on us if, if it, if it fails miserably. Oh, I agree. So, <laughs> so I'm, yeah, so I'm, 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 not, I'm, I'm not advocating. Yeah. Why not. We need to be safe. Nice and us and it's approved. Does that apply to the powder puff game on Saturday? Yeah. Powder puff? So, so that is not an extra curriculum. That's a school activity. So it does not apply to the school. So the parents. So the 250 limit? No, it would, uh, that, that, is, that is something that would be outside the scope of this. That, to, that is the only activity at this point that has been approved in the state of supplemental or in addition to uh, athletics. So the, in order for us to be able to do that safely, it's just the participants and everything else is live streaming at this point. I would not advocate opening that up to uh, the, the confines of this. I would not. Are they doing a bomb fire this year? No, at this point, no. Are we going to live the thing? Yes. Mm -hmm. I never go to the powder puff game, so I don't know. You've never had a kid in it before, though. I did. <laughs> My son was in it, but yeah, I didn't go. All right. So, um, and any other questions for the administration about this before we vote? I do have a question. Yep, yep. Is the homecoming court going to be allowed? Yeah, the, I actually asked the same question, and the way it was, they are considered part of the participants of that game, so then their parents, they will each get two tickets. So, but yeah, that'll be, and I think it's, it's an additional six, Teen? No, it's a, it's only an additional like 14 kids because some of them are already involved in cheer and uh, and football. So I think it's only is that right? That the, the homecoming court. The, how many kids are? How many kids are up for court? Is it 10 total? Yeah, it's fine. But um, we are not to read that deep. So. Yeah, it's but it but the the way it was written, they're considered participants for the homecoming game. 
so their parents will be able to be here. Correct. Any other clarifications requested or uh, qu um, questions on on the, uh, the the changes that are being proposed? Um, can we have a, um, a roll call vote? Yes. Okay, uh, moving on to personnel. And like I said, there was um, an addition um, under um, 319 for personnel, but do I have a motion for personnel 7A1 through 4? Mr. Strobel, do I have a second? Do I have any any, um, any uh, comments, questions? Okay, hearing none. Um, can I get a vote? Yes. Yes. It was my turn, right? Sure. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Under old business, um, uh, A, one to two, one to two. Mr. Strobel, do I have a second? Ms. Leone. Um, um, can we get a vote? Unless there's any edits to it, I don't think so. Uh, eight, eight A one two. Um, Mr. Strobel, Ms. Leone. Mr. Strobel and Ms. Leone. Yes. 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 Okay, I don't have any new business listed. Um, do I have any presentations by the public on um, any issues discussed in the meeting or any other issues? Okay, hearing none, I have a uh, motion for adjournment. Mr. Strobel, do I have a second? A second. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.